Welcome to the CEO's blog for this week. And as I say, COVID's all around us and we kick off with that. Uh, what we're looking at is the uh, removing the regional boundaries. Um, a lot of work's going into this. We're waiting for a little bit of information from New South Wales Health, but uh, it is our intention to move away from these boundaries, if possible, by the end of the month. So keep an eye out on that. Uh, and we're sorry we can't do it any earlier, but we're bound by certain restrictions. Um, in respect of the submission from the Canberra and Goulburn clubs to help trainers that train at those two facilities, it's proving to be a little bit problematical, but uh, we'll be asking the clubs for more information so we can move on with that matter. But as I say, wear your mask, social distancing is very important, hygiene is very important, and as we see, this, uh, this virus can end up anywhere, even this week in parks. It's landed there with no known source. Certainly, it's not within harness racing because of the protocols we have in place. There was some, and quite a bit of discussion, I should say, with relation to the horses going to Leeton tonight. I can assure uh, everybody there that every precaution has been taken by Harness Racing New South Wales to isolate those people away from the rest of the fraternity. There's three horses, there's three people, plus um, a, a guard, a security guard, basically, a person that will keep an eye on everything, uh, from Harness Racing New South Wales. So rest assured, Harness Racing New South Wales is doing everything it can, one, to remove those boundaries as soon as we can, and two, to protect the interests of the industry at large. The Breeders' Challenge is upon us, and hasn't it started off with a bang last night at Penrith? Of course, what we're doing with this Breeders' Challenge is something we've been forced into by the COVID-19 pandemic, and we're doing our very best. But what we're seeing is that uh, we're certainly getting fantastic races. Uh, we move forward into the second round of heats soon, but still we've got to work with what we've got. Harness Racing New South Wales went out deliberately and asked for people to put in submissions. From those submissions, we have worked a, a program that we think will go forward very well into the future. Last night at Penrith, we saw Brad Hewitt's Armour Renegade, very dominant in the Phillies race, whilst Tasty Delight for Brian Portelli was absolutely sensational in the closest finishes. So uh, Ricky Alchin's horse there running second will be uh, a force into this series as well. Back to the conditions, if there is still something that the uh, connections don't understand, contact Sean Snudden. He will be able to help you. There might be something there that you need to know that will really help you into this series, especially as we go into the second round. So I wish everyone the best of luck with uh, their horses in the series as two-year-olds and three-year-olds, and, and we'll have some fantastic finals at Menangle on the 24th of October. During the series, though, we are naming these races after local studs and stay in the standing in New South Wales this season. This is in recognition of the tremendous work that these people do for our industry, uh, for breeders, for owners, for the in industry at large. A special shout out to Jackie and Mary and Jock at Success Stud. 53 years they've been in operation and they're celebrating it this week. They'll have some foals on the ground s soon and so will the rest of the studs. So I hope the foaling season goes very well for you as well and you have nice, healthy foals. Colts and fillies, doesn't really matter. As you see with these Breeders' Challenge races, the money's there. There's different divisions for each. You just have to be lucky enough to get the best one. In recent times, we've seen Harness Racing Australia come out with some very important changes, uh, changes that are for the benefit of the industry. But one change that has been announced this week is the change of the racing season. It will go to a calendar year from January 1, 2021. What does that mean to racing in New South Wales? Basically, what it will deliver is, as we see the current Breeders' Challenge Series running through September, October, November, that will be the permanent place for the Breeders' Challenge going forward. In all likelihood, the finals will be run of the major series at the end of October each year. So hear it now, get ready, place your horses for next year. You'll be able to race them early, spell them in the middle and race them late for the Breeders' Challenge. So um, this is a great move by Harness Racing Australia, a long time in the making, almost 100% of the states are on board, all the states will go with this because we have a national sport. So um, well done, Andrew Kelly. Ken Brown, our Ken Brown is the chairman of Harness Racing Australia and all the executive there, and of course, all the members of Harness Racing Australia who voted in the affirmative for this change. 
Riverina Paceway commenced the week of racing last Friday afternoon and it was great to see Rebecca Brewer win her first Australian race as a trainer and a driver. Of course, Rebecca did have success in the United States when she went over there to get some experience in our wonderful sport. At Newcastle on Friday night, Jason Harmy was the trainer, driver, owner of three-year-old filly Harms Loana. Father and son combination, Chris and Andrew Burke, combined with two-year-old filly, Feral Frankie. Both of these fillies, no doubt, are breeders challenge bound if they were sustained, whilst Clayton Harmy and Blake Hughes landed their regular double. At Tabcorp Park Menangle on Saturday night, Leonard Kane became a world record setter when he won with Zenart for Craig Cross in a mile rate of 151.4 over the 2300 metre journey. Bernie Hewitt trained a winning double at Parks on Sunday with something about Lexi and Sammy Dance whilst James Sutton drove a winning double aboard Glenlee Hanover for himself and bid for stardom for Greg Pay. At Menangle on Monday, there were eight different trainers and drivers winning, but on Tuesday, Kerry Ann Morris trained half the program and her husband, Robbie, likewise. But only two of these were for Kerry Ann, the last preventing his wife training five winners. Wagga on Tuesday night and Rod Woodhouse and Peter McRae landed a double with Rihanna Rains and Pocket Blaster. The stewards were kept busy at Wagga in race two when they disqualified Black Derby, which was second across the line. Bathurst on Wednesday night, Gemma Hewitt not only landed a winner at her very first drive in a race with the horse she owned and trained, Cash Us Back, but made it two from two drives with Lady Swiss later in the night. Justin Reynolds also landed a double at Gold Ground Paceway. And around the week out, Penrith last night, the win of Spaghetti Legs, long odds, was certainly welcome to see. That was the highlights for the week. There'll be another great round of highlights this coming week, especially with those Breeders' Challenge heats. As we do each season, we look forward to October and the beautiful canola that grows around Yagara and the Western Districts. However, this year, there will be no Canola Cup. The club, the Yugara Club, have made a decision that um, due to a couple of very important facts, due to the regional boundaries that may still be in place come the long weekend in October, and also the fact that crowds won't be back, allowed back on track in, in huge numbers, that they will postpone or cancel the Canola Cup for this year. So next year, it will be run. In 2021, the Lexus of Parramatta Canola Cup will be there Disappointing for this year, but I can assure you that Colin Greenhow and the ever, ever hard-working Jody Greenhow have made the right decision, along with their committee, to move the race on for this year. The two meetings won't be lost, however, because they will be transferred uh, as just general meetings to Parks and Dubbo on the two vacant Sundays. So this year, the Canola Cup will actually kick off with Wiss Wyalong and Rod Crow and his committee have put together what I think is a very interesting and fantastic program of races. They've got two TAB meetings this year on the 11th and 18th of October. The uh, heats will be run on the 11th October and on the 18th we'll have a couple of mighty finals, $15,000 for the general race and almost $20,000 for the West Wyalong Cup. So West Wyalong will lead us off into the Carnival of Cups, the TAB Carnival of Cups program for 2021. So we look forward to it. Great racing always at the Carnival of Cups, and I hope everybody aims up for these events. As I indicated last week, Breeders New South Wales have a fantastic initiative with the local supporting local stallion tender. Don't miss this opportunity. Visit their website and see what a wonderful array of stallions they have on offer. All credit must go, of course, to Flora Robson and her very harmonious and hard-working committee. But with this one, Martin Seeper is the driving force. So just go to that website, click on. If you need to, contact Martin and make sure you secure one of these fantastic stallions for your mare this breeding season. Closing on a sad note this week, uh, the passing of Noel Booth. Many of you will remember Noel as the person who broke in and first trained the mighty first Lee, who went on to win the 1968 Inter-Dominion for Kevin Robinson. It was Noel who recommended to the owners that Kevin Robinson was the man to take this horse to the great heights it did. However, Noel was no slouch 
He was a, a fantastic driver and on one occasion drove the entire card at Redcliffe. The following week, only beaten the nose in the last race, he would have repeated what he'd done the previous week. Noel's last big winner at Harold Park was Kick the Tin, which won at very long odds, but he had declared it a special. Many years ago, Noel broke a horse in for me and my great mate Peter Volandis. It didn't go on to be uh, firstly or Kick the Tin, but still we had great fun with Noel. To his sons Noel and John and all his friends, the condolences of the fraternity here in New South Wales and many other places where he raced. May he rest in peace. That's it for the blog this week. Great racing coming up. If you watched those races at Penrith last night, those two breeders challenge heats, they were fantastic. They're on again tonight at Leeton. They'll be backing up again, not the same horses, but the races at Dubbo on, on Sunday. And of course, we finish up the first round of heats of the Breeders' Challenge two-year-olds at Tamworth next Thursday. All the best with your racing, enjoy your harness racing, and whatever you do, social distance, wear your mask, and think of everyone else around you with this coronavirus that's still a pandemic that's affecting us all.